seemed appropriate. All right, folks, I wanna give you some help when it comes to your purchasing decision with the Sony a6400. Is the Sony a6400 a better camera when you compare it to the a6500? Spec for spec, there are some differences, but real world use case, I've got some opinions on that. Specifically, we're gonna be going into stabilization. Now, I've already edited all of this footage and realized that some of it, some of it, some of the clips are a little overexposed and push the colors just a little bit. I also have other clips that are peppered in to the footage here that will give you some other perspective. I want to also provide a summary, my recommendations and use case here at the end of this video, so I will meet you back here. But honestly, I have to say, having two cameras, I'm gonna be able to just produce twice as much content for YouTube, so let's actually get to doing that. Wait, how am I actually gonna... Tubulars, I've missed you. Thank you so much for coming back. And yes, I am trying to create more content on this channel. I am doubled up here with cameras. If you can see in my mirrored uh, sunglasses here that I have the A6500 here on my left and the A6400 here on my right sitting on a bracket and a mini Manfrotto tripod. This right now, the way that I have it set up is about a six pound rig. So what I want to talk about is the in-body image stabilization. Is it more helpful to have that in the a6500? Do you really miss it in the a6400 when it comes to, let's say, vlogging or your professional work? I have used this camera to vlog and do handheld. I've also used this camera, the a6400 that is. I, it's weird to having to talk into, like, it just feels weird like having to talk into the middle. So I've used this for commercial work as well. Now, what I want to talk about, we're going we're gonna to get into some lenses and the lack of IBIS in the a6400, but does the optical steady shot that comes in the lenses, the Sony lenses, is that enough to offer you that benefit in your workflow? So I'm rocking the Sigma 16mm 1.4 on both cameras right now. They do not have optical steady shot. Those are not Sony lenses. So we're gonna see the comparison between the fact that there's no IBIS in here and there is IBIS in there and there's no optical steady shot in the lens. I'm gonna be switching that out between the 16 to 50, which has optical steady shot. That's a kit lens that you can get for either camera, really. And then also the 18 to 105 that also has the optical steady shot. So let's get into it. Let's walk around a little bit, see what you think. All right, so a little perspective here. I'm not walking, doing that heel toe, heel toe thing. I am on this uh, trail. I'm also gonna walk on some tracks over here just to give you some context as well. So with the cameras, I am rocking a Cine 4, a custom Cine 4 profile. I used to use Cine 4 all the time on the A6500. I mean, I really loved that uh, picture profile. It's almost as if like I'm talking about, hey, where's Cine 4? I haven't seen him around here. Will you give him our best? Next time you see him, he's such a good boy. So I, I really love the Cine 4. And so the cameras are set up almost exactly, well, they are set up as exact as I could get them. I've also got auto ISO, auto white balance. So I will correct for any kind of exposure and maybe some color correction, but no stabilization in post at all. This is all handheld and this is six pounds, it's, it's heavy. So right now you're seeing like on this trail where I'm walking around with the 16 millimeter, uh, Sigma 16 mil with no steady shot whatsoever in the A6400. So what do you think about that? Why don't we go ahead and switch over to the 16 to 50 on the 6400 and see what that looks like in comparison to just the IBIS built in, but no steady shot on that 16 mil on the 6500. So let's switch over to that. Okay, so rocking the 16 to 50 over here on the 6400, which has the optical steady shot in it. What do you think? I mean, we're just strictly on IBIS over here and then the OSS over here. Now, one thing I do not have is an ND filter. Like I do have an ND filter on the 16 mil, but not on the 16 to 50. So my aperture is like at 7.1, I believe. I'll fix the exposure in post, but like I said, I'm not touching any stabilization or anything like that. I'm walking on a trail, you know, as if I would walk on a trail holding a six pound rig. So not doing like any kind of crazy heel toe, heel toe thing. 
And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the flip up screen. I actually like the flip up screen. However, is that one of the things, like the thing that, that pushed me over to purchasing the 6400 versus the 6500 or even the A7 III? Not necessarily because, and I'm getting on some railroad tracks, is because in the, maybe I'll stay in the shade here. So in, and maybe I'll switch too, six pounds. It gets heavy like holding out, holding out there. What was I saying? Okay. In the grand scheme of things, when it comes to the Sony cameras, not having the screen over here on the 6500 where I couldn't see myself, honestly, like I've had, um, I'm walking into a tree branch here. I've had just like a minute, like a minuscule amount of situations where I wasn't in focus. Like, I mean, like almost non-existent. So that really wasn't an issue for me. However, I do like the fact that I can flip over here, just double check my exposure, check the zebras, you know, see if I'm in focus. It is nice, but it's still, you know, it's still a small screen. It's nice to have, but it's not something that I heavily rely on, um, but, but just a nice bonus. So the 16 to 50, what do you think as far as like that offering some optical steady shot, some stabilization? Why don't we flip over here to the 16 mil and why don't we pull that off and check out the ibis paired with the optical steady shot so let's do that so we've got the 18 to 105 over here on the 6400 and the 16 to 50 on the 6500 both oss lenses obviously the ibis is built into the sony here the sony they're both sony's the 6500 so let's talk about professional workflow let's kind of talk about the budget we'll walk here along the railroad tracks and what I will say is that for the $100 that you, you could put away and put this toward the 18 to 105, I still think it's a great investment. Although the 16 to 50 is great. It's a good little kit lens. I'm trying to use it a little bit more, just, just as another piece uh, in my arsenal, my kit. But what I will tell you is that getting that focal length with the 18 to 105, having that 105, just in a, your professional workflow, I think is gonna go so much further now, from a stabilization standpoint, I would say if you're in at around eight, nine hundred dollars for the 6400, that's to say that you didn't get the kit lens, but you picked up the 18 to 105, or you already have it, and you, and you know maybe you even have the A6500. Getting something to stabilize, like a gimbal, which I use a gimbal in my professional workflow, that is actually something that I would recommend. So for like a for a few hundred dollars, so like nine hundred in on the 6400, if you already have a lens, because maybe you have uh, Sony cameras like you're already working with the Sony camera, Sony alphas, then you get a, a gimbal, you stabilize it, you're gonna be good to go. I mean, you really are. And if it's an 18 to 105 with the OSS, like even more so. Not to mention that extra battery life being helpful and the recording limit or lack thereof. So the 6400 having the chipset, the A9 chipset and just that upgrade, it does have the same sensor as the 6500. Those are the same, but the processor is different. And so, you don't have the recording limit or really those overheating issues. I have actually hacked my 6500 so that it doesn't have a recording limit, but I do some like interviews, like some professional interviews, and I need to be like locked off and interview, like having the camera rolling for maybe like well over an hour. And the 6400 is gonna do that. The 6500 was fine. Like once I was able to, to get rid of the recording limit, that became a non-issue, except there were still some overheating problems I still set the, the parameters high, but it would still kind of flicker and I would always worry if the thing was just gonna shut off. Whereas the 6400, I'm not really worried about it shutting off. And you know, and if I need it to record much longer, then I would use like a battery pack or something like the iFootage, which I reviewed that as well. All right, so why don't we head back to the studio because I'm a bit parched. I totally forgot about my water. You don't forget, you do not forget your water in Colorado. It's fairly dry here, especially like when you're out hiking and stuff. And so, again, nothing's changed. 18 to 105 for the 6400, 16 to 50. We're walking down a hill, handheld. This thing is heavy. Like I said, I work out, I lift, I do all kinds of stuff, but this is still hard to kind of hold this out for an extended amount of time. So what does it look like walking down a hill, just kind of this like muddy dirt hill and uh, trees in the background to kind of bracket things just to see how the stabilization is. I'm probably way overexposed on this because I have no ND filter on it. So maybe, should I walk backwards? Since the sun, this is a terrible time to record. I mean, the sun's like way overhead. It was supposed to be overcast today. 
which actually I think it will be. The clouds are definitely coming in. I think it's supposed to storm later. So let's get back, get some water, get in the studio. Let's break down a couple other things here. So let's add some additional context here and some clips. So on this particular clip, I have the A6400 paired with the 18 to 105 that has OSS. And regardless of whether you have OSS or IBIS combined on a trail where you're not doing heel toe, you're, you've got a heavy hiking pack on and you're on uneven terrain, it's still going to be rough. But I just wanted to show you that clip. Now I do need to mention that the Sony 16-50, to I didn't really give it a fair shake in the beginning when I got it with this A6500, but I have to say that it is a great lens and getting some good colors and, and sharpness out of the lens, being that the fact that it's a 16-50, to it's a kit lens, but for 100 bucks, if that's all you've got in addition to investing in the A6400, I say go for it. But if you can save up for the 18-105, to this is also going to be an amazing lens. Now going wide when you're at like 10 or 12 or 16, that's also gonna offer you some benefit when it comes to like in the camera or out of the camera, the visuals of getting some extra stabilization, whether OSS or not, because ultimately you're going wide and if you've got an aperture of like 1.4, 1.8, anything 2, 2.8, if you can blur that background, that's also going to help you folks. But something like this, the Sony 85 millimeter, it's a full frame lens that when you put it on a crop sensor, you're punching in to about 127. This has no OSS in it. So keep in mind that anytime you're punching in, even with an OSS lens, I am always recommending using something locked off like a monopod, tripod, or gimbal just to offer that extra stabilization. Because when you're punched in on the subject, that jitter is really gonna come through regardless. So in the final summary here, the A6400 coming in at around $900 is a huge win when you compare that to like around $1,200, $1,300, $1,400 depending on where you're picking up the A6500. I know that the A6400 is supposed to not replace the A6500, but hey, honestly, I do pick up that camera quite a bit more often than I do the A6500. Although I still use this camera, I'm not getting rid of it. It is still a great piece of kit. Okay, so let's get out on this one. Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. I really appreciate you tuning in on this one. I adore your beautiful faces, and I can't wait to see you right back here on the next one. Seemed appropriate.